Tom Moran here from Tom's Big Spiders, about to do my second episode of Tangled Webs. Uh, this is a series I came up with because I film a lot of stuff during the course of a month in my tarantula room, whether it be tarantulas molting, um, some feeding things, uh, some of my scorpions, a lot of different stuff that sometimes doesn't make for a good video on its own, but when you put them all together, makes for an intriguing series. So I did my first one. It seemed to get a lot of thumbs up. People seem to appreciate it and like it, so we're going to go ahead and go on with the second one. I did plan for this to be a monthly thing, but unfortunately I started this one in August and time got away from me and I didn't get it finished, so we're finally finishing it up. So although I haven't been able to stick to the monthly schedule yet, hopefully I'll be able to get it down to something I do monthly or in the very least, you know, every time I get a bunch of stuff that goes together really well to make one of these uh, programs. So moving ahead, what we have today is a lot of molts. I had a lot of things molting this summer right up until when fall began. I have uh, some scorpion babies. I finally got my first centipede. Uh, I'm going to do a review of a vendor I just used. So a lot of cool things that hopefully you guys will enjoy, including the question of the month, which I guess would be the question of every three months now because it's been a while since I did my last one. So anyway, hopefully you guys enjoy this. This will be a fun one. I'll come back at the end just to talk a little bit about what to expect next time and uh, on to the program. Okay, so I'm really excited about this one. This is my Cerocopelma species Santa Catalina. I've been waiting for this one to molt for a while. It's been a voracious eater um, and kept eating, 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 eating. Finally, about two months ago, it stopped eating. I thought the pre-molt was on the way or the molt was on the way. Uh, instead, it just kind of hung out in its burrow a little bit. The other day I came in and checked on it, it had kicked itself a bulb patch, and the bulb patch had turned really, really dark, so I knew the molt was eminent. Here, you can see the legs have that orangey color still. I was afraid this one was going to molt out to a male. I'm leaning toward female now, but in a moment I'm going to see if I can get that molt out of there without disturbing he or she, so I can sex it, because I'm really hoping to get a female. I love this species and you don't see it around very much. So there we go, Cerocopelma species, Santa Catalina. Gorgeous, gorgeous spider. And looking good, so very excited about this. We'll go and uh, sex that molt out and stretch it out for a moment, in a moment. And here we are just a few seconds later. She uh, was no pride, no problem getting the molt away from her. And as we can see right in there, the spermatheca, it is a female. So I'm very, very excited about this one. I only bought one of them when I got her. And I kind of rolled the dice and hoped I would get a female. And it looks like I did. So that's great. And this has become one of my faves. Just a really cool spider, not one you see around a lot. So I was hoping she'd be with me for quite some time. And if we look at the measurement here, do a diagonal. Pushing six, about five and a half or so. I'm going to slide that down a little bit. So she's going to be a big girl. I'm guessing she's probably about six inches, six and a half inches now. So big girl. Beautiful species. If you can find these guys, definitely uh, pick one up if you like the larger, faster growing tropical species. Cerocopelma species, Santa Catalina. Sorry about my stuffy nose. Allergy has been killing me. So there she is. Nice young lady. Okay, I've been waiting quite a while for this one, and I've actually referenced it a couple of times in the comment section of my YouTube channel, where people have been asking about T. sturbius. My female has been in pre-molt for quite a while now, and today I checked on her, and she has just molted. So I'm going to try not to disturb her that much. I'm not going to be grabbing the molt right now to try to see how big she is, but there she is. Let me just get a... And there's her old molt, which when she's off of it right now, it looks like she's probably taking, uh, sucking the rest of the fluids out of it. When they molt, they lose a lot of fluids. So when people see their tarantulas, uh, quote unquote, munching the molts, what they're doing is kind of scrunching them all up and sucking a lot of the fluid back in so they don't lose it. So there she is looking absolutely gorgeous. Dear Lord, this thing is huge. Now, I had her at about eight inches before I can tell you right now that I put my hand up to it, and my hand's about seven and three quarters inches or so, and she was easily as long as my hand. Oh, just 
not spooker, easily as long as my hand without being stretched out. So I'm very curious to see how large she is. I'm hoping she's pushing about nine. But there she is, Theraphosa Sturmy, female, just molten. I'm going to leave her alone because she's obviously not very happy with me doing this. I hate bothering them, but I'm very excited about this one. So there we go. Okay, now that she's settled down and moved away from the molt, I was able to get it out. As you can see, she's huge. This is the molt from my female T Sturmy that was on earlier. And this plate, I believe, diameter is an inch or sorry eight and a half inches so she is just actually just over eight inches wow that's a big girl so i'm guessing she's pushing nine now she looks enormous and these guys put on a ton of size um, in between molts as my dog barks at nothing in the background so she is a big girl i will try to get a accurate and accurate measurement on her when she hardens up and is okay, but it might be a little tough to do, but I'm guessing she's right around the nine inch mark. So big, big girl. Yeah. All right, now we're gonna to attempt to feed my Theraphos, a Sturmy female who molted about three weeks ago. See if she's ready to eat. And she is ready to eat. Yay. I'm just gonna hold there for a second. I'm gonna drop one more in. As the top falls down, probably scares the heck out of her. No, she let that one go. These are just so much up on. Man, she is huge. That's a big, big spider. Oh, come on. There we go. Double munch. She's going to go over hide. There we go. So, first meal after the mall. Looking gorgeous. She's got more of her rod. Uh, brown tones back she actually was black at first which is gorgeous and she's pushing about nine inches so i have to decide whether or not i'm going to try to breed her because i do have my male that just matured out but he is also about nine inches and i'd rather do a smaller male just in case but we'll see so there we go theraphosis jeremy munching on two big dubia roaches So I'm probably not going to get the best footage of this one because she's very well entrenched in this massive webbing here. But this is one of my O. Philippinus young adults or adult. Actually, she's probably adult now. She's got to be pushing five inches. Um, I she wasn't eating, and I thought she might have been pre-molt. But one of the things about this species is they really have these long pill-shaped kind of lift abdomens that make it difficult to tell sometimes whether they're in pre-molt. It's not like they swell all up like some of the New World species. You can kind of see her abdomen there. Let me just, there we go. But she molted. Pretty excited to fatten this one up again. This is one of the species I'm thinking about breeding eventually. We'll see. We'll see a lot of males offered. But, uh, and I have my hands full right now with Papalopus slings. So hopefully I'll be able to get a picture of her out and about in all of her tangerine glory. She is right there. So, Orphanacus philippinus, Philippine tangerine. Being coy, just molted. A lot of molts this summer. Just went to do some feeding, and my Pamphibedius antinus that I suspected was in pre molt, she turned down a meal last time, has molted. She's looking absolutely gorgeous and very black. Love the looks of this spider. For some reason, I thought they turned out to be more of a brown, but she is looking great. Let's see if I can just zoom in on her here. What a beauty. I just love the velvety appearance of these guys. It's just amazing looking spider. And then her molt is right over here, which I will pull up in a moment and get a size on. I'm guessing I'd, I'm guessing she's probably about eight inches right now. We'll see though. I, I try to underestimate because I hate to be that guy that just says he has this gigantic spider and it's not. You can see her under there under her hide, doing well. So this just happened. I checked on her a couple days ago, so she's not gonna be ready to eat for quite a while. Keep in mind, a species this size can take upwards of a month to start eating again. My female T. sturvey molted as well. You'll see her in a moment in the video. And in her case, it's been three weeks already and she hasn't taken a meal. So there we go. Very excited about this one. And uh, just to dispel a little myth, I had somebody come on the last video I posted of her and say she's overfed. There's a uh, rather persistent myth out there that these guys can be overfed. 
I honestly don't believe it. Uh, it happens quite a bit with tarantulas where people mention that if you feed them too much, they can explode. What can happen is they can get precariously fat, and then if they fall or something, they can easily rupture an abdomen or whatnot. But I really, I'm not a big fan of the myth that Pamphlobedius species can eat themselves to death. I just don't think it can happen. So here we go. Pamphlobedius antinus, looking beautiful. Let me see if I peek on her. There we go. Well, we got the Pamphlobedius malt out, and now we're going to give it a measure. So it's pretty close. It's like about seven and a quarter. Move over top of it. So she's probably pushing about eight, eight and a half now. It depends. I'll try to get a measurement on them, but it seems to be particularly difficult when they're molted out and running around the cage to get them to stand next to a ruler. So there we go. Pamphlobedius antinus put on quite a bit of size. Looking good. Something a little different this time around. We're not going to be dealing with tarantulas today. We're going to be dealing with scorpions. My Titius stigmurus, uh, Brazilian, some type of Brazilian species. I'm not really good with the common names. Why these are so interesting and why I'm doing this one today is I picked this one up as, I believe, three or four instar scorpling and went to check on her the other day to see if she wanted to eat. And let me just, I'm going to let you get in nice and close there. And we'll only do it for a minute. You can see she's got a bunch of uh, scorplings on her back. This species is parthogenic, I believe it's pronounced, which means they don't need males to reproduce. They can reproduce by themselves. So this one's new name is now Mary because she had a little immaculate conception. I've counted, I think, 10 scorplings so far, and three of them unfortunately fell off. So I'm going to back off and let this girl go back in, and I'll put a little picture in here as I continue to talk. And I'll Billy look over at the scorplings over here. Here are the three that fell off. I'm going to try to save them. I don't know. I've heard that once they fall off the uh, mom's back, it could be an issue. Sometimes the mom eats them. The mom didn't eat these guys, which is good. But uh, we'll see if I can't keep these guys going too. So, yeah, these are ones that apparently in the wild, I believe the ratio is there's a lot more females to male. So they can basically reproduce asexually on their own without having a male around, which kind of blows my mind a bit, having just spent some time trying to breed tarantulas and what goes into it, to just know that I grew this one up and it just had babies on its own. So very, very cool species. These guys are very hot. This is one I don't want to get my hands anywhere near. Obviously, I don't get my hands anywhere near any of them. But this is one we're extra careful with. So when I took the babies out, I had to make sure my hands weren't in, within striking distance. But an absolutely gorgeous species. I'm not going to go ahead. Well, no, we'll leave her alone for now. What I'll do is insert a uh, picture in there. We'll take a photo of it afterwards. Because, again, I don't want to bother her too much and spook her and have her eat the babies. But I did. The only reason I'm doing this right now is I did have to move her to get those out to hopefully save them. So we'll see how it goes. But I'm telling you, you know, I'm obviously a tarantula guy. Never going to, that's going to be my first love as far as the little creepy crawlies go, but I am absolutely loving the scorpions. This is one of the coolest things I've ever seen. So, Stigmurus, or Titius Stigmurus, T. Stigmurus. Thank you, Cal, for the assist. Cool Brazilian scorpions, Brazilian stripe or something. I'll, I'll figure it out and put it on the thing. I'm terrible with the common names, but just something cool going on in the collection. Figured I'd share Okay, month has passed, so it's a previous video, and we're about to kind of rehouse my female Titius stigmurus, which we have called Mary, because this species is parthenogenic, which means they can reproduce asexually. She has never bred. She has never felt the cold, clumsy touch of a male scorpion before. She just mm. spontaneously... Come on, that was awesome. That was awful. That was on the spur of the moment. I didn't even think that awful. went up. I have a career in writing yeah. romance novels. Um, what we've got going now is I've kept her babies with them. This is a species that's highly communal, um, and she's done a great job. She's been a great mom. She hasn't been eating a lot herself, though, and it's a little concerning only because apparently they can have clutches every three, four months or so once they have their first one. So she should be fattening up, preparing for the next batch of little babies that we're going to have. So what I'm going to try to do now is put her into a new enclosure. I was hoping to get something a little bit larger, and I'm still on the lookout for something that will give me a little bit more height, a little bit more room. This is fine, and most importantly, if she has more babies, this will allow me good access to get the babies out, like what I'm about to do here. 
So it's working for the time being, but I am on the lookout now that some of my scorpions are full grown and bigger, nicer enclosures for them to give a little bit more room. Woo, easy there, killer. Hopefully she doesn't go, she's gonna go right around the other side and make this really tough. And this is a one of the hotter species I have, so I need to be careful. And there's gonna be babies all over the back of this, but we're gonna go ahead. Easy girl. Oh. All right, and there's a the baby. We don't want the babies in there, so we're gonna go ahead. Stop, uh, put this down for a moment, and then we're going to try to get count, count the baby. So there we go. I'm going to put a water dish in with her. I'll throw a little sphagnum in, but they do like to climb. She's usually on the back of this thing in the morning. Sometimes I'll come in, she'll be on the top of this. So I give her a place to kind of get off the ground, but that should be appropriate for the time being. Again, I'm going to look for something a little bit bigger in the future, but I do want to fatten her up. She stopped. She, after she had the baby, she was eating fine, then she stopped eating. One of the thing, cool things was she was killing the crickets and allowing the babies to eat off the crickets, which was great. Now, the babies are all, I believe, three and four in star now. So what we're going to try to do is just get a picture because I don't even know how many I have. Three of them fell off of her when she still had them on her back. And unfortunately, two of them died immediately. One of them I had going. I thought was going to make it, and I checked today, and it, it didn't make it. So holy Okay, that's a lot more than I thought I had. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So she ended up with at least 22 before the other three died. Wow. And I think, what did we read? The normal clutches are like 6 to 14. Six, 14 or 6 to 12 or something. I'm sure people have had more, but it seems like every time I have babies, I get more than most people. Which is great. These guys, what I'm going to do because they're so communal. Did you count the one on the back? I, didn't count, I think I count them all. Um, because they're so communal, what I'm going to go ahead and do is allow these guys to grow together. They eat peacefully. peacefully. They don't fight or anything. So I'm going to continue. If you want to zoom in on that little baby there. Continue to keep them together. I will be rehousing them into something a little bit bigger soon. And then eventually my goal is to have a communal with all of them in it, which I think would be amazing. These guys just get along so well. It's really neat to see. There's been absolutely no friction whatsoever. When I had my Centroidus Gracilis together, some of them got together, uh, got along very, very well. Other ones, they would eat each other, like little burritos. So hopefully these guys continue to do well, and we will go ahead and keep updating as we go, because the next step will be getting them. Right now they're okay in here. They're comfortable. I'm going to drop in a bunch of crickets in a minute, and it's neat because they go nuts and grab them all up. But then eventually what will happen is we'll move these into something bigger and then eventually into a big enclosure like what I have my uh, species Mambos in. So there we go. Uh, Tidius stigmurus is all my little babies. Great species. If you're going to keep these, know they are hot. They do like it a little bit moist. I'll be filling up the water dish in a minute, spraying down the sides to allow it to keep it a little bit moist. And they do like something to climb on when they molt. A lot of times they'll molt upside down. But awesome little species. Just keep your fingers away from them so you can avoid a trip to the hospital. Hey, Tom Moran here. All right, this was originally supposed to be an unboxing. Unfortunately, there was a bit of a debacle, so I have a little story behind this next one. I made an order from Pinchers and Pokies, who I've ordered from several times before for some scorpions and something else that I'll show in a moment. And unfortunately, my package got lost in the mail from FedEx. It got sent to the wrong location. Now, I've said a million times before, it's, it's easy to judge someplace when you're buying from them when things go right because everything goes really great. And you can say, oh, it was a great experience. What I like to see is when things go wrong, how they respond. In this case, their communication and the response to this incident was just amazing. Um, Amanda and Eric got back to me before I even realized the package was lost and must have been tracking it and told me that the package had been delivered to the wrong place or had gone the wrong area. He asked me if he could get a hold of them if I'd be able to receive the package at my house because I'm usually 
I haven't delivered close to work because I'm nearby. So to make a very long story short, he got on the phone with FedEx and basically got them to deliver, hand deliver the package to my house. Granted, it was a little bit late, which is why we don't have the unpacking video at nine o'clock at night, nine thirty, what was it? Nine thirty, ten o'clock at night. It was late. So I, I thought that was amazing because most people wouldn't even have noticed that the package got lost. They were right on it, got a hold of FedEx, got me the package that night, and everybody was safe and sound. So the good news was everybody was safe and sound. The bad news was Billy and I were unloading and rehousing tarantulas and something else that we'll show in a minute again um, at 10 o'clock at night, and I was exhausted. I have to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning, so we didn't get video of the actual unboxing. So I apologize for that, but I did want to make sure that it's known that Pinchers and Pokies, top-notch, customer service. I've ordered from them, I think, four times now. There was a little mix-up. Uh, something happened early on when my first order where I had the dead-on arrival. They were so quick in responding or replacing it. It was amazing. So I've had nothing but fantastic dealings with them. And Eric and Amanda are both fantastic to talk to. So now that that's out of the way, unfortunately, you won't get to see me open up the box and see all the good stuff, but we will get to take a look at the three scorpions I got and the little something extra that you will see again in a moment. So without any more further ado, we'll get on to the actual animals. All right, first up is Heterometris Laudicus, or the Laos Forest Scorpion. Picked this one up. I believe it's third instar. I'd have to double check on it. But uh, this one went and took refuge right away beneath its cork bark. And since then has done quite a bit of extensive burrowing around the uh, whole outside of its enclosure. But neat little species. I look very forward to growing this one up. And although it went ahead and burrowed, I do catch it out quite a bit. Every morning when I come down, I'm up early, like 5 o'clock in the morning, and I catch all of these guys out and about. So there's no worries. If it burrows, you won't see it. Just come down in the morning, check out, or at night after the lights go out, and you'll catch it out hunting. Next up is Hot and Tata, Hot and Tata that we got from Pinchers and Pokies. I'm going to go ahead and try to feed this guy, although he did look pretty chubby. He's like, no, I'm really not hungry. I love when they like one fist them. Get a little closer to this guy. As you can see he's in great shape. There we go. Focus. He hasn't stung him yet. I wonder if he's just trying to get him out of his face. You're fine. We'll get the light off in a minute, let him eat. But as you can see, nice and healthy, great shape, a little chubby, and hopefully about to eat this like a burrito. All right, next up is Smeringurus mesensis, mesensis, Arizona dune scorpion. We're not going to keep the camera on this one for too long because I feel bad for the little guy because it immediately ran into its enclosure and hid or under its cork bark and hid so it's like looking at us now like please get this darn light off me but you can see great shape looking fantastic really wants us to get the light off it so we'll oblige in a moment that's Smeringurus mesensis I have a hard time with the AE if somebody's good at the uh, Greek Latin pronunciation please let me know how that's pronounced I'll put it in the Obviously, there'll be a little header with it. Smeringurus mesensis. There we go. Almost sounds like I know what I'm talking about. Arizona dune scorpion. And here is the animal that actually got me to the website to begin with, and the one I was searching for, which is the Scolopendra dahani. I was dying to get some centipedes for quite some time now. As you can see, this little guy shoot around. And I uh, finally got the itch was too much. I had to scratch it. So went online, was looking for some of the species that uh, might interest me and saw that pinchers and pokies had these guys in stock. And even better, they were captive bred babies. So had to pull the trigger and get one. And what was even better is they actually sent me two. I got the freebie. So even better. 
but really fascinated by these guys. Again, after doing tarantulas for so long, it's it's fun to branch out and see some of the other creatures that are out there and available. And as you can see, these guys are beautiful. I just love the looks of them. I have a soft spot for anything orange, as I've it's been well documented through my numerous videos. So really loving the looks of these guys and uh, watching them eat is just amazing. Something totally different from what I'm used to with the tarantulas and scorpions. So tough. All right, now to the question and answer portion of this video. This one comes from Rick and Suzanne. It was an email, and it was specifically about Uathla species. They write, we recently bought one species yellow and four species red, and read some random post that they had changed names. We were a bit confused. We tried Google, and the name Homeoma species came up. Can you tell us something about this, Rick and Suzanne? And they apologize for their English because it's not their native language. It was perfectly fine, guys. All right, this one's a little bit confusing because the name Homeoma species fire has been popping up quite a bit in the U.S. hobby now, which is a new thing. So I'm going to go ahead and try to break this one down quickly so people understand what they're buying. I'll give you a hint. They're not two different species. So let's go on to look at my Homeoma species fire or Euthla species red. All right, so the answer is they are the exact same species. Over in the United States, they've been traditionally referred to as Uathlis species red, but the genus Uathlis is generally a placeholder that they use for spiders that they haven't yet described or identified. So everybody's pretty much known that name is not going to stick, but there hasn't been any movement on re-identifying them, so for the time being, that's it. The problem is many people feel like the name will eventually be Homeoma. That will be the new genus, although it hasn't been changed yet. And uh, folks that sell these guys over in Canada and UK and Europe sometimes refer to them already as Homeoma species fire. So that's where you get the two different names from. They'll most likely move to Homeoma at some point, but it hasn't been done yet. And this is what kind of gets on my nerves is that people, when they start changing the names of them, even when they haven't been described, it confuses people because a lot of people have heard about Uathlis species red either through my videos or they become just very popular all around as a species. And so when they suddenly turn around and start calling them something else and don't explain it, it just causes confusion. So again, it's one of the fun parts of the hobbies with the name changes. Um, they always change, but in this case, it's people kind of jumping the gun. Um, I understand why they would start calling them homeoma, and I think what's happening in some cases is they're breeding these more readily in Europe. So their U.S. vendors are buying them wholesale from European sellers and breeders and therefore changing the names over. So I guess it makes sense in that respect, but it has caused some confusion. So if you want to get a hold of one of these amazing little spiders, then what you're looking for is either Uathlis species red, the Chilean flame, or homeoma species fire, which, I don't know, Chilean fireball, I don't know, whatever they're calling it, I don't know what the common name is. Is this one kind of escapes and Billy laughs in the background. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it here, but there you go. Beautiful little species. Just keep it going. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did like it, please hit the like button. That does help people realize that the content is probably pretty good. If you're just watching my channel for the first time, feel free to check out some of the videos um, here and here, or go ahead and subscribe to my channel up here. I always forget where I'm pointing and then I have to add these things all in all afterwards. So again, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll be able to do one of these again real soon.